Hi there everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome. Well, we've got part 18 on tap for you guys today of our Polar Lights Enterprise refit build. You can see that we've made a little bit of progress since our last video. Things are getting really uh, shaping up here really nice as far as the builds goes. You can see that we've got our saucer mounted onto the secondary hull now. I did that whole process off camera because there really wasn't a point in showing you guys that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I used some 15 minute epoxy to glue the lower half of the saucer down onto the neck first. I used a couple of clamps and a couple of props to make sure that it sat and uh, dried overnight nice and level. I made sure it was lined up with the pylons and the neck and everything. We were nice and square, so that came out really good. Came back the next day and I worked on uh, buttoning up the wiring inside the saucer. We've got our control boards in there and I tied together all our circuits for our momentary switches and for our control circuits for our deflector dish, for our photon launcher, and for our lighting effects on the rest of the model. And in the process, when I was checking all the circuits, I ran into a little bit of a problem on the photon launcher. They say there's no devil, Jim. But there is a... Right out of hell, I saw it! I'll come back and talk about that here in just a little bit, and I'll tell you about the problem that we found and what we did to fix that. And uh, so you guys don't run into that issue on your build. But you can see here at the rear on the pylons, my uh, circuits that I've got coming out of that, I've got a little LED connected here to test the strobe circuit. That flashes at the same rate as the, uh, rate as the one that we've got up here on the bridge. And uh, I tested that on both the starboard and uh, uh, port sides of the model here. I also tested the circuit I've got for the chiller grill and the main power that will come on that lights the flood lamps and the thrusters at the very rear of the nacelle that we'll have on a power switch uh, on our base when we actually mount the model on the base and uh, everything tested out really good there so we're good to go there everything's working fine so everything's looking good now you can see up here on the saucer uh, that uh, we've got this little seam now going around the edge uh, that we're used to seeing on these models so in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to take you through it and show you how to fix that um, I'm going to start off by masking this off if you remember in the original uh, beginning of the series here we did a lot of work when we were working on the saucer to save our nice uh, detail of that sensor grid band that goes all the way around the saucer. So we don't want to ruin that and sand that off now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some masking tape and lay it on all the way around the edge here. We're going to bring it down just below the edge of these window groupings here. And you can see that that's where our seam starts. And that'll protect that area from being sanded down. We're going to start off with sanding with some uh, 180 grit sandpaper here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sand down the imperfections in the plastic before we even do any work at all with our putty. Uh, the reason for that, it's really simple. The uh, plastic is harder than the putty, guys. I get this question quite a bit about how we do seam work. And so when you're sanding down your seam, if you have an imperfection in the plastic, like if you have a high spot or a low spot, uh, your putty will sand down first and that, that uh, seam will keep reappearing or that imperfection will keep reappearing. And you'll have to do it over and over and over several times before you'll finally sand down the plastic and get it right. So we want to make sure we correct that problem first. After we get that taken care of, we'll go and lay a uh, coat of putty all the way around it, let that dry, we'll sand that out smooth, and then we'll finish up this whole process by uh, repainting that edge with our uh, airbrush. I've saved uh, the original batch of paint that we painted the uh, hull color with here, and so it'll match perfectly. That's another important thing you want to do. You want to make sure you have some leftover paint of your original color, preferably from the same batch, and that way when you do any touch-ups or blend-ins, it will match perfectly on the model, and you won't be able to see where you did any... Uh, uh, you know, adding your paint later on. So that's a really important step too. Up here on the top of the saucer, you can see that we've uh, added the detail for the uh, phaser banks. I painted that detail on. We talked about that early on when we started on this model too. We wanted to make a few little minor changes to make it more accurate. This kit had the uh, phaser banks raise the rectangle shape, which is incorrect for the uh, you know compared to the studio model. So we sanded those down and we uh, painted that detail on there so that now in the floodlight lights that you won't see that rectangular shaped shadow casting onto the uh, the rest of the saucer here. What my plan is is I'm going to come back after we're just about done here sealing this up and I'm going to use some epoxy or material like that with a little drop or two and we'll just uh, put a couple of drops on there to simulate the uh, the domes of the raised phaser banks themselves and we'll paint those and that'll all look really nice so we'll worry about that here towards the end though. You can see we've got a lot of small little detail uh, decals and things that need to be done to this yet too. We don't want to do that just yet either because we're going to be using tape uh, to mask off the edges and everything here and we'll just wind up peeling those off or ruining them. So we want to make sure all this uh, putty work and paint work is all done on this before we do any of that. Once that's all done, we can come back and do all of our uh, final decals. There's a whole bunch of little marking decals that still need to go on this. 
and once that's uh, done we can seal this one final time with a, a coat of clear. I'll probably wet sand this one more time, get it really smooth and then uh, lay down our final coat of clear. Here you can see on the bottom of the saucer we've got our planetary sensor there and there are a couple of really really tiny light leaks around the edges of that. I'll probably just use a paintbrush to touch those up. I don't like using a paintbrush at all on any of my models to paint anything uh, normally because you can, you know, it just doesn't look as good as regular spraying does. But uh, these, they're just such small, tiny little pinpoints of light leaks that we can do that with a brush and get away with it and you'll never even be able to tell. You can also see that we've got one up here around the neck and that blue area there. So on that particular case, uh, it's too big in the area. I don't want to use a brush on that. So we'll mask that off and we'll just take our airbrush and touch that up and that will uh, disappear. I've got some canopy glue in there that's dried right now to seal that up and that'll all go away just fine. So, But our planetary sensor is looking good. It's all lit up really nice and even. I'm really happy with all the lighting and how it came out. So what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to set up on the tripod and get the camera position for you and we're going to tackle this seam on this saucer. So we'll be right back with that. Sit tight everybody. We'll see you in just a couple of seconds. All right, everybody, we're working on the saucer, as you can see here, and I've got her all masked up. What I've done is I've already worked my way around the edge with some, uh, this is some 180 grit sandpaper uh, on some sticky back, like DA type paper. I just folded it over, so I got a nice smooth edge there and started working my way around. So now what I'm going to be doing, I switched to some 320, which is a finer grit, and we're just going to start scuffing this down. I've already got it worked down pretty well where it's pretty smooth, and I'm just uh, going over this now so that we kind of get uh, the rough edges from the deep uh, scratches that we've put into this plastic removed and then these fine scratches from the 320 will be easily covered with some putty here we won't have to worry about that and it's just kind of helped me take the you know the, the, the surface down a little bit nicer so you want to have a little bit of a scuff surface on there so our putty will stick to that really good and I'm just slowly working my way around here Just take, you know, take your time and just look for little imperfections. I'm kind of laying my eye along the side of this thing here to see if I see anything big, anything big sticking up or anything like that. And it doesn't look like it. it. Looks like we're all coming together really nice here. And this nice thick painter's tape is uh, protecting the rest of the uh, side of the saucer from being sanded. Where we've got our sensor grid on there, so that's really good. And coming around the edge here. This is all sanding out really lightly because we've already done the hard part with our 180 grit. Okay, so we're done with that. I'm just going to take a little bit of compressed air here and blow the loose stuff out of there so we don't have uh, powder underneath of our uh, putty that the putty won't stick to. <clears throat> good there. All right, time to break out our squadron putty. And I've got a batch of that ready to go here. Get rid of the first little bit there that gets hard and we'll start off with some nice soft stuff here and we'll start off. I'm not going to get real close to the neck yet because I want to use a special tool to get in there. I don't want to get too much putty on that. But I'm just going to start working my way around here. And I don't want too much Putty to go on the bottom side either to where I have to paint anything on the bottom half of the saucer. I just want to stay uh, on this edge here. Uh, remember too guys that <clears throat> this putty it tends to shrink a little bit. Uh, we've talked about that before so you can lay this down and you've You've got some coverage there, but then you'll notice that it'll sort of seep into the seam, uh, especially if it's a fairly significant seam, and it'll just kind of shrink down in there. So what I like to do before I uh, sand is I like to let this dry a little while, and I'll just come back and put another uh, quick 
uh, top coat on this and it will save me a whole step of sanding and then finding out that it's shrunk and I have to do it all over again anyway so just uh, kind of something to think about <clears throat> Now on something like this, uh, you could use the uh, 3M spot putty that we often talk about because this is not a uh, what we call a load-bearing area or seam on the model where there would be any twisting action or flexing uh, where that softer putty might crack. But I'm not using that here because, uh, number one, it's, it's the dark red oxide color. It will take a lot more paint to uh, cover that up and hide that. And I don't want to risk you know sanding and getting the stains from the powder and everything like that on the rest of the model here so we're just going with this white stuff in this case but really that's the only difference and the 3M might sand a little bit easier than this stuff does but um, this will be a nice solid uh, uh, seam here we won't have to worry about it cracking or coming apart or anything like that so uh, but you know we've talked about that a lot the putty has uh, the different putties have different uses and things like that but uh, just thought I'd explain why I'm not using the red putty in this particular case <clears throat> this white pretty much matches with the uh, color of the hull here, so just thought I'd stick with that. I'm just kind of looking at it as I go, and I can see that there might be one or two spots here where we're going to have to hit it once or twice because we've got, again, more of a significant gap than in other areas here, but uh, it's looking pretty good, though. You can see I'm just covering up over these thruster port holes. I'll be able to refine those. Uh, once we finish sanding this down, and I'll just use a uh, small little drill bit and open those back up. I'm coming around the corner pretty nicely here. And I'll just go ahead and leave my tape on there when I sand this off too. Again, protecting the rest of that. Now they'll probably it'll probably leave a little bit of a a hard edge or a line there when we're done doing that. And then I'll be able to just take some really fine sandpaper, some 600 or something like that, and I'll be able to knock that down, and we won't damage that. Uh, we'll pull the tape and sand it at that point, and we won't knock down our uh, any of the detail on our sensor grid. We worked really hard to preserve that, so. We'll do the best we can. This model is extremely difficult to try and save that. If you if you lose a little bit of it, it's not a killer. Like I said, you get the you can either uh, come back later and paint that detail on, or you, you can use the uh, kit supplied decal, which I, that's what I'll be using, and uh, things will things will work out just fine. It'll look it'll look it'll still look really nice if you do it like that. And I'm just going to kind of get up as close as I can here. And I'm going to take one of my little special tools here in just a second and we'll apply a little bit of that putty as we get close to the neck. I, I want to make sure I don't blob it on too thick there and, and um, get any on the neck itself so we have to paint or anything like that. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to wipe this excess putty off my finger. And we'll just take a basic hobby knife here number 11 blade and we'll just put a little bit of putty on this tip and we'll just use that to go in there and lay our putty on this way I can get a little bit more control over it than just using my finger All right, I like that. Let's roll her around here and get the other side. Yeah, if you got this model on this stock stand here, you want to be careful when you spin her around, guys, because when she's not parallel on the stand, it's real without the nacelles on it, it's really nose heavy. It can tip over on you, so that's something I'm kind of keeping my eye on here whenever I move it. Okay, we've got this going on. towards the end of the tip here. Don't want any to get on that neck. A little bit more. 
Well, they actually make some little tools that you can find at your hobby store, most likely, that are actually little kind of miniature spoons and things like that for uh, applying putty. So that would make this a little easier. I don't happen to have one of those. I just make do with what I have. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, you can make do with different types of tools and things like that. Okay, so we've got this... Um, as close to the neck as we can. I'll probably, there's just a tiny little bit left over there uh, really when it re gets really close to the neck and what I'll probably do with that since it's not, uh, there's not a gap as far as uh, a big seam there and there's not a step there, I'll just probably use a little bit of canopy glue and put that in there and let that dry and it'll self level and then we can uh, just touch that up with our airbrush and that'll work just fine. Okay guys, so <clears throat> that's it for this particular phase. Uh, what we're going to have to do now, unfortunately, is step away for a little while and let this dry. I'd like to give this putty a good hour or so to dry, and then we'll come back. And again, long time for me, short time for you guys. We'll be right back with you, and we'll pick up with the sanding of this seam. So we'll see you for that in just a couple more seconds, guys. Okay, guys, one more thing that I forgot that I was going to explain to you about our little problem that we had with our photon launcher. I thought I could talk about that now, I guess, while we're letting our putty dry here a little bit. As I mentioned, when I connected up my wiring inside the saucer, I went to test my uh, photon launcher board here, and I had nothing going on, no lights going on at all on the uh, photon launcher here at the front. Don't you think I know that? There was, but not anymore. And uh, basically, we can take a look at the instructions here, and we can see that it's very critical to read instructions, guys. This was a mistake that I made, a rookie mistake. I didn't follow the instructions here. I had thought I had built enough of these to kind of remember, but uh, you can clearly see on the instructions here that Ralph has got this marked for our two LEDs here coming off of our board, that the board itself has the resistors built in, and there are no resistors needed on these LEDs. Well, my problem was is that I wired those up with resistors on them inside of the uh, uh, torpedo bay there and so with having the resistor on the LED and also having one on the board there was not enough current coming through the board to light the LEDs so that left me with a very serious problem well rather than being able to get at the wiring and replace all of it or get to the uh, LEDs what I had to do is I had to do some kind of major minor surgery here and what I was able to do is I was able to uh, very luckily go ahead and remove this little forward bulkhead here of the, the actual launcher itself and that was really difficult and I was really worried about doing that because if you've built this model uh, you'll know that the uh, two side pieces here of the uh, uh, torpedo bay are a tapered fit to where you have to put that bulkhead in one side of the part then glue it together because you can't pull it out of there or push it back in very easily uh, because it's uh, the part is actually uh, bigger than the uh, opening towards the front so, but very, very luckily I was able to get a uh, very small screwdriver and gently start working my way around the edge of that bulkhead and get it loose and pull it out of there. And very luckily my, my uh, putty work and my glue here held up and I didn't wind up splitting open the neck and having an issue where I cracked my decal and did all, you know, ruined all my putty work and everything. So what I was able to do then is I was able to get in there with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and, and get my bulbs loose and pull them out far enough where I could clip them off and uh, I wasn't able to pull the entire circuit out of there or get to the resistor so uh, what I did then is I just ran some completely brand new wires from the board down through the neck and up through the bottom here and then I was able to drill a really small access hole uh, from inside the deflector housing up into the torpedo bay here and route my wiring up in there and fish it out with a pair of tweezers connect my LEDs and then onto the board and connect it on the top and the problem was solved so I just basically left part of that uh, circuit in there and clipped off the wires and it won't harm anything it's not connected to anything else but there was just no way to get in there and remove that so a critical step could have been a critical mistake could have cost me a lot of time and, and effort we could have cracked this bay here we could have uh, you know ruined our paintwork we might have had to take this whole thing off and it would have really been a major setback so I can't stress enough rookie mistake like I made myself you want to make sure you follow the instructions walk yourself through this whole thing before you actually do the work maybe one or two times, do a dry run before you finally do it. And then always check everything before you uh, seal everything up. Uh, my problem was that I did check the circuit, but I connected it directly to power just to make sure that the LEDs lit at a full 9 volts. Well, the board doesn't put out 9 volts. It puts out less than that. So with a resistor on there, 
it wasn't enough to light the LEDs. So that's the problem that we had with that. So if you have a problem like that, guys, don't give up. You know, if you have a major setback on your model, uh, a lot of things have happened to people. Uh, don't pitch the model in the trash. With a, with a maw that could swallow a dozen starships. Work your way through the problem, come back, and uh, maybe ask some questions of people that might have had a similar situation or things like that. And there's always a way to work out a problem on a model, guys. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. Uh, it's just plastic, and it can always be fixed. If it's paint or plastic, it, it can be fixed, guys. So, Okay, guys, I'll come back here in just a minute, and we'll uh, have our putty dry. It looks like it's starting to dry up here pretty good on us already. And I've got kind of low humidity in here today, so it's drying really well. We'll come back, and we'll start doing some sanding on the saucer. See you then. All right, everybody, we're back again, and we're ready to sand down our uh, putty. It's been drying for quite some time now, and it's gotten nice and crusty and hard, so I'm going back to my 180 grit paper initially here to knock the big stuff down, and then we'll finish up with our 320, and then we'll finish after that with some uh, 600, uh, because that'll be uh, fine enough to where our paint will cover up the scratches with that. And after we get it roughed down here with the 180, we'll have a look around and see if we have any low spots or areas where our uh, putty didn't take. And again, you know, putty work is always kind of a uh, situation where you might have to go back and hit it a couple of times. Well, you know, like I mentioned, it shrinks a little bit and it, uh, you know, it can, you can, until you actually put primer on there sometimes too, you can't, or paint, you know, you can't really see that you've got an issue going on there. Because, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to see it with it being the same color and everything. But uh, we'll just uh, go around here and have a look. And you can see that this uh, 180 sandpaper here, it, knock, it knocks this stuff down really fast. So you can see that our putty is really nice and dry too because it's coming off there in a nice fine powder like it should. kind of slightly going around the edge here on the bottom because I did get a little bit of putty down there. No worries there when we go to sand or when we go to paint this we'll mask the bottom half of this off too and we'll just let our paint overlap a little bit around the bottom. We've got some more Aztec painting to do on the very edge of the saucer too um, that I still have some masks for. This is working out really good. area up underneath of the impulse deck here is always a hard spot to get to on this model. But it's cleaning up really nice. sanding away here guys and feeling it with my finger as I go and it's really feeling good nice and level this will come out just beautiful when we're all done here and this is another major step in the construction of this model getting this saucer taken care of Funny how you put a lot of putty on and you wind up sanding most of it all back off. Oh, just going to continue working our way around. The, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there were some more serious gaps on certain part of this than there were others. Uh, some parts of it went together so nice that you couldn't even really see the seam at all. So. And what we're going to find here too when we pull the tape is that we're going to see a little bit of a hard edge where uh, the 
tape met with the uh, putty, but again, like I mentioned earlier, we can go back with some fine paper and uh, knock that down really easy and not damage our surrounding detail. Make that blend right in. You can really see how nice this 180 grit paper cuts this uh, putty. It's quick work with quick work of it. You can see I've started to sand away a little bit of my tape here, which is no problem. I'm also going to have to come back here on this side on the uh, port side and fill a little bit of putty in that little gap where the uh, airlock door goes before we mount the photo watch airlock door cover. So we'll get that taken care of too. You can see that little depression right here in the shot. Alright, coming around the bend here. Normally I like to wet sand, but at this point on the model I don't want to get a lot of water and uh, it will make a mess all over the model here, so we'll just kind of deal with the dust. And we can, we've got our little compressed air, air here ready to go. We can blow all this away when we're done. Getting up into this little corner here is a little bit of a pain. see that we're going to have to use a little bit more putty in there again to that seam is still evident there a little bit. Okay, so I've got this pretty much roughed down now with our 180, so I'm switching now to the 320 and we'll scuff this down a little bit more. This will take a lot of the uh, big sand scratches out of our putty here and make things blend in a lot nicer. Have to go all the way back around again. Then what we're going to do when we finish this stage, I'm going to have a really close look at it. If it looks okay, then we're going to uh, peel our tape. And then we'll come back and, uh, as I said, we'll switch to some 600 grit paper and we'll finish the final sanding on this and get it all blended in real nice. Really looking good though. Very happy to getting to getting this part of the model done, and I can move on to the uh, ever challenging nacelles. The nacelles aren't too difficult to build, but the painting that we've got to do with the Aztec mask is going to be quite a challenge on that. And I'll take you guys through that whole process. Uh, there's probably some of the most complex patterns in the Aztec and going on there, and we've got to do our routine where we've got to reuse some of our masks a couple of times. And there's some really fine detail on that, so we're going to have to really be patient and take our time with that. We want that to uh, come out really nice, just as nice as the rest of this paint job has so far. So we don't want to cut any corners at this point. Okay, the bottom half of the saucer is feeling nice. I'm also going to have to go back and relocate the holes, as I talked about, where the... Uh, uh, Truster ports are, but we can find that pretty easy since we've got the upper ones that we'll be able to see. And we'll just take a drill bit and uh, with our pin vise and bring those back. I'll be filling those in with some canopy glue when we're all tidying things up here. Okay, guys, I like how this feels. Uh, it's feeling pretty good. I think we've got most of our. Uh, big spots gone, so I'm going to start peeling off some of this tape now. Just work our way around and then we'll see what we've got here.
can still see a little bit of a spot there. Not too bad though. I think we'll be able to clean that up with uh, a little bit of light sanding like I talked about. Take a little bit thin here where I uh, sanded through it. No problem. I've got some, uh, if you get a little bit of this tape residue on here too, I've got some uh, stuff that I'll show you here in just a second that I use for getting rid of that. Uh, it works really well. It's called a wax and grease remover, and it actually works really well for uh, you use it for cleaning your surfaces that you're going to paint. And make sure you don't have any, uh, you know, grease or oil or anything on there. Um, and it's neutral towards paint or plastic. It won't hurt it. And uh, it takes off adhesive too, very very nicely. Um, you can see we've got a little bit of this tape left on here that doesn't want to let go. There, I was able to peel that off. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some 600. And we will uh, take down a little bit of this leftover material here that we can see from our hard line where we had our tape. See, we've got a little bit of stuff going on right here. I'm going to switch back to the 320 and just hit this a little bit. A little thick spot right there. Staying on the kind of the lower edge away from that sensor band. And I remember that there was a little bit of a hard glue sticking out of that spot. I think that's what it is. That leaked out of the seam. Actually when I do the seam work or glue my uh, parts together I like to actually use a little bit extra or you know plenty of glue in there so that when uh, it uh, seeps out it actually helps make part of a seal and it makes a really really secure bond on that. <clears throat> okay, let's start working our way around here and get rid of that little edge. Most of this is looking really good right off the bat, guys. I'm really happy with it. We lay down our uh, uh, decal here for the sensor band, and you're not going to see anything there at all. That little airlock detail smoothed out. Now I went and used this used paper here too, I'll explain that a little bit, so that you can kind of get an in-between grid if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it's not quite, you know, as coarse as brand new 320, so it's allowing me to have a lot more control on uh, how much, how aggressively I'm sanding this, so I'm, again, you know, not losing my detail here on the uh, side of the saucer. It's actually looking really good. got a little line there but we want that line right below the uh, sensor grid looks like that's where the sensor grid ends so that's perfect okay we just got this one little area right here where we've got a little bit of a hard line from that glue I'm going to hit it with this more aggressive stuff here should take that down. Yeah, it's definitely there.
320 here. Basically what we've got going on there guys is a little bit of glue so I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time burning up fit, uh, footage on the film. You get the general idea. I'm going to keep working that down a little bit. I may have to retouch it with a little bit of putty to uh, straighten that out. But uh, we've done really, really well here guys. I'm going to finish doing that. I'll come back. I'll have this all cleaned up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to start uh, remasking this and set up our uh, airbrush and get this all touched up. And we'll have uh, put in a good day here on the model. So we'll be back with that in just a couple of seconds, everyone. Hey there again, guys. Back with you. Well, I have to apologize real quick, everybody. I got so into what I was doing here that I completely forgot to shoot this entire segment where I was doing my paintwork on the edge of the saucer. But I'll come back and explain it to you really quick. It was pretty straightforward here. Uh, as I talked about, I laid some masking tape all the way around the top and the bottom edge of the saucer. I masked off the neck so we wouldn't get any overspray on that. And then I covered the rest of the model with some cling wrap so we didn't get any overspray on that. And uh, just uh, got out my paint that I had uh, left over from the original hull color and went around and just sprayed the entire uh, edge of the saucer here. And you can see it turned out pretty good. There's a couple little spots here and there that when, you, when I got the paint on there I could see were a little few imperfections. And they're just really minor, but I'm going to go back and fix those with just a little bit of putty, a quick sanding, and then a retouch-up with the paint. So nothing big at all there. It turned out really well. You can see we're all the way around. Uh, there's the circumference of the saucer now on both sides, and we've got our neck detail all clean and looking good. And uh, we fixed the light leaks down there at the neck. I've gone in now, and I've touched up the uh, light leaks that we had around the uh, planetary sensor. So everything's done there. So what I've moved on to now is I've started to paint on some of the details. You can see I painted on the... Uh, thruster ports there, and I started to add some of the decals, the pinstriping there, the little circles that go around our uh, marker lights, and um, there's quite a bit more here to go on this saucer as far as decals. We've got these little squares here uh, that need to go on these little uh, hatch covers and things like that. There's some little red dashes that go up around the bridge, and we're going to get all that done, and then we're going to come back and seal this, like, like I mentioned, with another coat of uh, clear on the top and the bottom to get all that locked in and good to go. We've also got to do the sensor band decals all the way around the edge there. And um, so that's what we'll be doing next on that. Uh, but mainly what we're going to be getting into now next, guys, in the next video, which will be part 19, is I'm going to take you over to the nacelles. We're going to start working on those. I'm going to show you how I put them together and set up the lighting in them and get those all wired up and painted. Then we're going to do our Aztec painting on those. And once those are finished up, they're going to be completed units. And then we'll go ahead and install them here up onto the pylons and connect our wiring and uh, the model will really be looking good. All we'll really have left is the uh, 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 finishing off the uh, deflector dish here. And I have a nice little uh, trick that I came up with for doing some nice little extra detail on that uh, deflector dish that I'll show you guys too. But uh, we'll come back to that in the next episode, guys. That'll be part 19, like I mentioned. So things are coming along really, really well here. I'm really happy, and we're getting close to getting this one wrapped up. About another week or so, and she'll be all done, guys. And then we're going to be waiting for that beautiful base to come in that I had ordered and we'll install that and uh, get this whole thing tied together and uh, I think you guys will like what you see when we're done here so okay guys well take care happy modeling out there we'll see you next time